The millennial politician has made history. A woman named Martina White. She became, she won a special election in Philadelphia. Um, let's see, it's the first time a Republican won an open General Assembly seat in Philadelphia in 25 years. She became the 120th Republican in the House, part of the largest GOP majority in the state since 1958, um, and including a Senate that increased its majority in historic numbers in 2014. So this is a terrific win on the state level with the GOP and millennials. JD, tell us it about is, it. It's it's awesome. I mean, you know, all we hear is that that the GOP is the party of old white men, uh, and that they're just the worst people ever. And clearly. Uh, you know, we we don't know anything about winning in urban areas. We don't know anything about uh, you know going out to normal people because we're all one percenters and we all you know go around on our yachts and and have fancy parties and uh, look down on all the normal people and and just you know this is this is amazing. This is this is a young woman. She's 26. And she knocked on three thousand doors. You know, she she uh, you know did the real grassroots kind of uh, you know person on the street knocking on on doors, talking to people, getting their input, uh, and and won in Philadelphia. I mean, if if you asked me, I don't know before I, before I I heard about this, where was the least likely place for a Republican? To win anything, Philadelphia is definitely in my top five, you know, places. It's it's clearly not a place that, that we're supposed to win. We're not supposed to win in Philadelphia. Republicans are not supposed to win in Philadelphia, and yet, or with young people at all. Well, no. I mean, young, there are no young people in the Republican Party. Well, no, of course not. So, why so, did you? Why why do you think this happened? I mean, uh, weak weak opponent, flawed opponent, or the national scene and and the Democrats and immense struggles right now in the press visiting upon that. I mean, what, what factors do you think led to it? Well, I mean, in reading in in reading about it, uh, it seems that it's just good wholesale uh, campaigning that that did it. And a company, you know, one of the things that I I thought was was really great from what she uh, was talking about was the fact that she was out there to not look down on voters. That, that's one of the big things, is that as a candidate, she wants to be a partner in finding solutions. A partner in finding solutions, as opposed to being the, you know, the nanny, being the, the big government czar that, that has all of the solutions to every problem, and it's normally by raising your taxes and spending all of that money. She actually wanted to be a partner, talk to people, hear from them, and, you know, participate in in government the way that should be you know, a real person to person activity where you know she's a real she's a real person she's not just some some politician some talking head and and that's another thing that, that that's really amazing about this the demographics um, in in the area that she ran it was a two to one voter registration advantage for the Democrats two to one advantage Twice as for the many Democrats. Democrats as Republicans in her district. And she won by 14 points. So, yeah, she didn't just get out all of the Republican vote. No. She won over a she whole appealed, bunch of Democrats. She appealed, she appealed to a broad audience. And, you know, I think that that has a lot to do with the fact that people are tired of, of, uh, of, of, being, of being under one-party rule. I well, mean, and it, sound, it sounds to me like she sort of put a lie to the false dichotomy. Um, we hear so much that Democrats are the party of big government, and government's going to take care of you, and government has to provide for you. And the story that they tell, the boogeyman that is the GOP, is that we're going to abandon you and let you die in the street. And it sounds to me like what she explained was the truth of the matter, but in a phrasing that we tend to not be accustomed to and tend to not be comfortable with, utilizing government as a partner 
to help you succeed. It's not going to stand. It's not that government stands by and lets you succeed or fail on your own. Government is not a neutral observer. Government wants you to succeed. So government is going to be your partner in achieving success. It's not going to be the one that succeeds for you. It's not your dad. It's not your mom. It's not your nanny. But it's going to. It, but kind of positioning the the GOP how we see the role of government is as your partner for success. I like that mentality. I, I think if we can kind of get more comfortable with phrasing things that way, it might help to break the conventional wisdom. If you instead, instead of retweeting somebody else's message and putting your own commentary in front of it, just put your commentary out there. And when you're when you want to when you see an article from Daily Cause or whatever and it says something that's mind bogglingly stupid and you want to quote it, don't share the article from Daily Cause. Share the, an article from National Review or Hot Air or or just write a post on your own.